All right. We got the next questions. Uh, so Amjad, you want to take next question? Yes. Number four. We'll come back, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Amjad. Um, 71 years old woman, currently smoker with a history of ovarian cancer, um, who was just hospitalized one month ago for acute myocardial infarction, presented with a 12 hour history of bilateral leg pain and paralysis. An examination, she has a dimension motor and sensory function, and her uh, legs are uh, verbal and cold. Uh, she has a remote history of bilateral iliac stent. The CT angiogram image are showing in figure one and two. The best management plan is so okay. this is a patient with a malignancy history and history of uh, iliac stenting bilaterally presented with a symptom of acute uh, threatening limb, acute limb ischemia, 12 hour. Okay, so it's a toe B also because yes, yes in Paris, you know, the foot are cold, you know, and 12 mm. hours already. The only thing they mentioned to you, they want, they said everything they put it there for reasons. Said an acute MI. Uh, where is it? A month ago. Recently, okay. yeah, one month ago. I just try to tell you, don't think about our to buy fan. This is for sure. You know, yeah. you know, this is you can tell from this. They want to tell you, she's not ready for major surgery. Put it this way, not for major surgery. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but at the same time, she's ready to be. She already have a decreased sensation. You know. Legs cold, so you have to do something, okay? And yeah. she has better iliac stent, which that means it's not an emboli. This is acute and chronic. So you already yes. have a chronic vascular occlusive disease. And remember what we said in a chronic, acute and chronic, you cannot solve them with a simple embolectin. Most of the time yeah. you end with a, with a bypass, you know? Yes, yeah. Uh, um, so it's different when you come with a normal artery and get an emboli in the aorta. So here you can look at an angiogram, you see a complete occlusion of the aorta here. Yeah. be the pulling of both stent, you know? So yes. it's acute and chronic. We don't know how her, her, her artery before, but mostly she has a disease aorta, disease, you know, iliac mm. artery. Even mm. though it looks nice for you to do bilateral embelectomy, but I don't think this will work because of acute and chronic, you know? Yeah. Even crossing the stent, if you got endovascular, I don't think this is, uh, you can able to cross the stents, you know, with this all occlusion, you know? Yeah. So this will, uh, will not, uh, endovascular the same to thrombolysis, you have to cross the lesion. And second thing, you don't have a time. So you don't have a time for thrombolysis, 12 hours already, okay? Yes, yes. And the second trick, they show you, what this artery they show you? What they did here? Uh, the second, why is they show auxiliary, you? Auxiliary, auxiliary yeah. artery. Why is they show you? For so other they, option, for bypass. So they give you the up, they give you the answer right away. <laughs> they yeah, see? <laughs> they, get, they tell you, go and do axillo by fem. It's very simple. I yes. mean, this really, they give you the question and the answer, you know? Yes. But if you didn't put this picture, it would be more difficult. But when they put this picture, because why is it show me the axilla? You know, why? I don't need it, you know? But it yes. looks they push you to go to the axillo by fem. Okay, let's see what's the option here. Okay. A, our to buy femoral bypass and fascia to me. We say no. So, because of for her. Okay. Yes. Okay. Precutaneous uh, endovascular thrombectomy with the stenting of the distal uh, aortoiliac segment. Uh, it's, uh, it will not work, as I yeah. said, acute and chronic. And so uh, 12 hours, 12 hours, you know? Yeah, and Sometimes time. they work. No, don't take me, I mean, my words. Sometimes they work. If you have acute and chronic, you can cross them with thrombolysis. Mm. But again, you already mm. 12 hours, you already 2B. You already have a paresis and you have, you know, so it's not good mm -hmm. timing for that. All right. Okay. Axillo by femoral bypass and fasciotomy. Sound, okay. um, sound good. Okay. Bilateral leg amputation. Mm, no. So no. The, the leg still, still viable. Yes, it's still viable. Open from big to me with the stenting of the distal hour to iliac segments. The same as you said. So I will go with the C. Yeah. From the radical kind point, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you can do it which way I can do what I do. Because when you do our axillo by fem, you have to expose both come femoral artery, right? I need to open them up, correct? Yeah. Okay, so you can try, you never know. I mean, that's just out from this question. This question should be easy, I agree. But in real life, when you open the come femoral, you can try your get your Fogarty. Maybe you be lucky, go all the way, do it, be lucky, get good flow. And then mm -hmm. you do an angiogram, you see some, you know, so you can do balloon in a stent, like a hybrid repair, you know? Yeah. But you have to be prepared for axillo by fem. So I give it like, I open both the groin, 
open come of femoral. I'll try to embellish to me. You know, just give us a chance. You never know. If my folly went fine, I got good flow from both sides. Then do a combustion angiogram. If something I can fix with a stent, I will do like a hybrid repair. If it's not, then I'm ready for axillo by fem. I didn't, I didn't delay anything. So you see my point? Yeah. Uh, because so this is from practical standpoint. But, but to answer this question, the exam, axillo by fem bypass should be done. And for them, of course, because 12 hours. Mm -hmm. All right? Yes. Because different sometimes different between what real life and what the exam, you know, exam have to be on the safe side, what the most reasonable, you know. But mm -hmm. in, in real life, because you know, every patient is different, not every patient is the same. So sometimes you change your you know technique depending on what the patient condition at that time. But in the mm -hmm. exam, they consider all the patients the same. They want you, you to choose the most safe and appropriate answer for the question. What should we be in this situation? All right. Um, all right, so should I go back to Muhammad or anybody want from uh, outside guys want to uh, pick up questions? No. Okay, Dr. Sam. Yes, who is that? Well, it's me, Dr. Maytham. Okay, Maytham, you want to go? Right, let me give you the next yeah. question. Mm -hmm. Hi, Sam, hi, Sam, here we are. Number five, let's go to that. Okay. Okay, so this is a 60 year old man with a history of uh, atrial fibrillation presents to the emergency room with a four hour history of pain in the left lower leg and foot. On examination, the foot is tender to touch and uh, cool with mildly decreased sensation. Plantar flexion strength is, di uh, is diminished four uh, over five. The femoral pulse is palpable and uh, a Doppler signal present in the posterior tibia. The right leg has a palpable pedal pulses. An angiogram uh, and the vigor is obtained. Following initial hebronization, the most uh, expeditious intervention to restore perfusion is. Okay, before we go that, let's go to question. 60 years old, at fibrillation, <laughs> four hours, okay? That's so, acute. So acute, but mm -hmm. four hours, so at least we don't need fascia. Usually fascia is six hours. I mean, according exactly. to the book. Mm -hmm. So this one, just to tell you that you don't, you have a time, you know? And the foot, this is what, 2A or 2B? Uh, there is decreased sensation and the plantar flexion also. The mild. So this is 2B. 2B. Uh, it's a mild decrease, you know, in the sensation. So mm -hmm. I think I will put it 2A, you 2A. know? Yeah, I think because the mild decrease, you know, let's say, let's go back to the guys, to the classification, see what, ah, here we are. Where is it? Here we are. Uh, decreased sensation, uh, C2A margin, decreased sensation to the toe with a normal motor. So just decreased sensation. Whereas 2B, you have sensation and motor, okay? So, so this is sensation, this. 2A, when you have sensation and motor, we talk about 2B, okay? So, Dr. So Salmon, this, in, this, in this patient, plantar flexion strength is four over five, so it's decreased. Yeah. I mean, the motor is affected. Okay. What about it like 2A slash B? Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. yeah. But anyway, it's just tell you that you have a time. Put it this way. Forget about the classification. I agree with Good. that. You know, it's like plantar strength damage. Yeah, four to five. You're right. So, you could put 2B. But at least it's not too bad that you don't have a time. So, you have the time, you know if you want to do a uh, thrombolysis, you know, or open repair. Mm -hmm. um, anything else? I think that's all. So should be straightforward. So what, what do you think, what do you do? So where's the clot first? Like on the, the clot end? is in the tibio peroneal tract and uh, the bifurcation and the, mainly involving the- uh, All right. So what options yeah, the have? What options are you treated this one? Uh, this patient can be treated with thrombectomy. Okay. Oh, How is the incision? Where, you do it? Where is the incision? Would it be below the knee or a groin? Given the other picture, I think the other picture is for the SFA. Uh, so no, no, I will go. No, it's no SFA. No, 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 no. This is Bobby no, Tia. And this no, is no, the other tibial. one. The right. This is? This is a posterior tibia. This is a foot. Okay. This is oh, a foot. This is a posterior tibia. This is a peroneal. Okay. okay. So I think I will go for below knee incision. Yes, so what's the advantage below knees and femoral? Why don't go from femoral? 
it's better control for the uh, vessels. Not really. And, uh, What's the advantage if you go below the knee? You see, when you go from above, you see the castle goes straight, right? Okay. So most of the time, your castle will go all the way to peronea. Really go to anterior tibia, posterior tibia, you know? Uh -huh. So when you go this one, you get you can get a clutch from tibial perineal triangle and posterior tibia, but you cannot select it from posterior tibial or anterior tibia. You know, this is a problem. You can do selective imbilectomy. Unless if you do like hybrid, you do like, you know, you put a wire through it and then you put Fogarty over the wire, which is not available in every place, you know. So in general, when I see clot below the knee only and the rest of the artery is free, the best way to go below the knee because you can do selective imbilectomy. You can clean all these three arteries from one incision from below, cleaned up very well. From above, it's very hard really to clean them very well from above, especially three arteries, okay? Okay. The reason why we this, don't waste your time. Just when you just go right away to the below the knee, open thrombectomy would be the best way, you know? Or you can do thrombolysis, but thrombolysis you have to go from above, you know? Either integrate or you go from over the bifurcation and you can do thrombolysis, you know? Okay. Uh, so let's see option what they gave you here. Let's start one by one. So A, uh, catheter directed thrombolysis via right pedal axis. Uh, I think the right is mentioned is palpable pulses. So why to go from the right? Okay. You say, as you mentioned, is you go from higher up. Okay. Uh, so B, a catheter directed if thrombolysis. If you want to go from the right, we go from the camo femoral because you got camo. You don't have yeah. to go from B, that'll be too, too far. I mean, this is really, no way it can be right answer. So next one. Catheter directed thrombolysis via anti-grade left pedal axis. It's already occluded, so anti yeah. it will be, it's not really? an unsuitable answer. Yeah. Right. If you want to go from the left, you go from the left camo femoral. We don't go really from below up with thrombolysis. Because you want, because a catheter sometimes it can occlude the artery, you know? So, so you want the artery to flow so you can get the, the, the TBA going down, you know? If the artery is occluded distal, then the TBA will go everywhere but doesn't go to that artery. And then, second, you may damage the artery. So, this is not good. We never do thrombolysis distal and backward, you know? If you're going to do thrombolysis, always you go from above, from again, femoral. So, if we be an answer, will be anti grade left. Femoral axis, you know, not pedal axis. Okay. Okay. So this is wrong. So C, surgical thromboembolectomy via left groin incision. Uh, as you mentioned before, if you will go for embolectomy and there is only the thrombus and the embolus in the below the knee, we will right. go just below the knee. I mean, yeah, but be careful. And below the knee, it's involved the tibial. If it's just involving yeah. the popliteal arteries below the knee, mm -hmm. Then yes, you can go uh, below the you can go from the femoral to embolectomy to popliteal artery, no problem. If the three arteries are free, no clot. But when the moment you see clot went down to the tibial artery, then you have to do below the knee uh, embolectomy. Okay? Uh, okay. What if the uh, as you said, what is the occlusion in the popliteal artery, and we can go from below knee and get it retrograde from from up and pick it down, bring it down. Making control for the three, the three vessels, the three tibials. Can we do it? See that question. Is the clot only in the popliteal artery? Yeah, and the three vessels is it, uh, clean. I okay. mean, there is no clots. And we right. can make a control for them. So there is no imply we will shower down to include one of uh, them. Usually, when you see a clot in the popliteal, this is a big clot, you know? The second one mm -hmm. you do for her, for her the always you pass it and you pull it back. So it's very rare, you know, to get anything embolied down, you know? Mm -hmm. So the only thing we go below the knee when you do selective. And the second thing is that the exposure below the knee is more difficult than femoral, you know? And second thing, but with the artery is not very good artery. When you open it and you suture it back, sometimes you get stenosis, you know? So really we don't like to do below the knee unless if you're going to do selective tibia. If you can get away from above, always above is easier. And really you can do completion angiogram, you can see bobitial, you can see your, you know, completion angiogram. Where here, when you do embolectomy, from the popliteal and you close it, it's very hard to do an angiogram unless you put a catheter through the posterior tibia and you should some die, you know? So really from technical standpoint is not, you can do it, but it's not the best option, you know? So when the clot only in the popliteal, no, I'll try to get it from above. If it's going to the trifurcation, then I'll go from below. Okay. All right? Okay. So D. 
the uh, surgical thrombomblectomy via left pilony incision. Uh, I think this is the answer. Yeah. And last one, surgical thrombomblectomy via left uh, posterior tibial incision at the ankle and retrograde embolectomy. Uh, it's not a good option. Not really, because yeah, it's so difficult. difficult. You can clean up the posterior tibia, but you cannot clean up the tibia, uh, the peroneal, you can clean the anterior tibial, you know. This yeah. one, the only time we do it, if you have posterior tibial, you know, distal occlusions, mm -hmm. and you can get from above, then you can go from below. But this is, you see, when you do this one, you stuck to one artery. When you exactly, go below, yeah. you can, can clean up all of them. So it's not the best option. Mm -hmm. so your best option will be D, correct? Yes, yes. Great. All right, this is, this is the right answer, right? Yeah, all right, let's go to the next one. Number six, should we go back, Muhammad, to you? Yes, doctor, ready. Okay. So, so catheter directed thrombolysis is being considered for a patient with acute thrombotic lower limb ischemia. An absolute contraindication to thrombolysis is? Okay. A la, uh, laparoscopic gastric resection within 10 days. Uh, B, uh, cardi uncontrolled uh, hypertension. C, uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation within uh, 10 days. Uh, D, presence of intracranial tumor. E, gastrointestinal bleeding within 10 days. Okay. I mean, so, all uh, looks, yeah, go ahead. Uh, all looks uh, are relative uh, contraindication, but the absolute is the gastrointestinal bleeding within 10 days. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, absolute, if you have a GI bleed within 10 days. Otherwise, it looks contraindication, but you can say it is not an absolute, you know? No, it's really uh, intracranial tumor, yes. I mean, it's contraindication, but not like if you have to do it, you have to do it, you know? Uh, Cardiopulmonary station is not. Uncontrolled hypertension is not. Again, all relative, really. Mm -hmm. Even surgery within 10 days is not nowadays, especially laparoscopy, not like the major surgery, like, you know, there's why I said laparoscopy. Yeah. So all this is relative. The only one, if you have a really active GI bleeding, you cannot do it. Or if you have intracranial surgery, if he has like a craniotomy, of course you cannot do it. Uh, the other relative, if you have an eye surgery, also I think this is not absolute. This is like relative, I think. You can do that also. Um, I think that's all. Any question about that? I think it's straightforward, this one. Yes, yeah, very straightforward. All right. Rafat, we go back to you. Okay, I was. Let's get number seven. Number 72 years old woman uh, is eight hours status post pharmacochemical thrombectomy and initiation of ongoing right lower extremity thrombolysis via a catheter placed in the left femoral artery for acute limb ischemia. Okay. Uh, intravenous heparin was given. Okay. For the intervention and is currently infused through the left femoral sheath. Okay. The patient now complaining of left lower limb weakness. Okay. Okay. Uh, on examination, she is disoriented mm -hmm. and noted to have a new weakness of the entire left leg and arm. Okay. The most appropriate immediate next step in the management. Okay. Before we start. So this is patient came with eight hours, you know. Acute ischemia. Uh, after eight hour thrombolysis. No, she'd be on thrombolysis for eight hours. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So she'd be on thrombolysis for eight hours. Mm. They give a hip brain during the procedure and then the femoral. In general, guys, you have to remember when we give thrombolysis, we don't give hip brain. You know, all the studies showed giving hip brain with a thrombolysis increase the intracranial uh, hemorrhage, okay? Uh, so we do not give. The only time we give heparin through the sheath, but it's very minimum dose just to keep the sheath open. Yes. So we don't, you don't give heparin, like you don't write patient on low dose or high dose protocol. This, this is wrong. It's the only thing you see like heparin, you know, perfused through the sheath just to keep the sheath open because otherwise the sheath can be thrombosed when you go with thrombolysis, okay? But don't hypernize the patient because otherwise you end with the intracranial bleed. Uh, this patient, the, he was given heparin during the procedures. And now we have heparin during the left femoral, but I don't know what, when they, what they mentioned by through the left femoral sheet, because you can give it, but it has to be small dose. I don't know about the dose here. But in general, from the history, what do you think happened to this patient? 
hemorrhagic stroke. Yeah, so he has hemorrhagic stroke because he has left weakness, disoriented. So what do you do first when the patient gets hemorrhagic stroke? CT, non-contracted. Before CT, he's getting thrombolysis. Stop so the uh, polio before you get the there and get the orders. Huh? Stop the thrombolysis. Yeah, and stop thrombolysis. yeah. the first thing, even if you're in doubt, don't wait to, for confirmation, be too late. Because, you know, TBA is very strong. So the moment the nurse call you middle of the night, before the CT, if you think any doubt, don't worry about the leg, thrombolysis. You see the leg get, get worse, no big deal. This is a life patient, you know? So the moment you hear the nurse tell you, okay, I think some change, stop the thrombolysis first. And then yes, I go for CT or whatever, but the first thing, stop thrombolysis, you know? All right? All right. So they said what the most immediate next step, you see? But then tell you what the most like diagnostic next step, you know? If they said what the most diagnostic next step, I'll do CT, brain. But the most immediate, appropriate mid next step, I will what? Stop okay. that. Email. Well, let's see what they said here. Uh, go ahead, Rafat. A duplex of the left lower extremity, femoral and infranguinal arteries. Will not help, it's useless, right? All right. So how B, going to help you with make diagnosis? Nothing, yeah. B, non-contrastity of the head. This will be your next step. Next step. I mean, not immediate, number two. Okay. C, okay. MRI of the brain. I mean, we don't do it in acute stage, you know, because the bleeding, you need MRI. You see bleeding, it can be seen on non-contrast CT. It's different from a stroke. Ischemic stroke, you need an MRI to see. Hemorrhagic stroke, you can see it in non-contrast CT. Okay, so when patient comes to the ER with a stroke, we want, before we start him on heparin, we want to rule out his hemorrhagic stroke because if you give him heparin, then it become uh, worse. So when patient comes to the ER with a stroke, before we start him on heparin, and we presume this is an, an uh, ischemic stroke, first thing we need to rule out hemorrhagic stroke. So the first thing we order non contra CT. The moment you see no bleeding on CT, then you can give heparin, okay? No. You don't need an MRI because non contra CT can show you the bleed, okay? Mm. D? D, stop thrombolytic confusion. Okay. This is the, and E, check BTT and reverse heparin F sub. Normal. Sopra normal. Yeah. Which doesn't make sense because not the problem heparin, the problem is the TB area. You know, okay. so and BTT will not help you. You know, uh, do you know how we watch TBA when you give patient TBA? How we watch him? What lab we order? Uh, fibrinogen level. Fibrinogen level. Yeah, it's very important. You know, yeah, to follow up fibrinogen level. Okay, when we give heparin, we follow with BT BTT. But what else is important when you give heparin to look at? Uh, ratio one platelet count. What else? platelet count? Yeah. So with the heparin, always look at the platelets with the TBA, always look at the uh, fibrinogen level, okay? Okay. All right, any question? I think this is just straightforward. Stop heparin, okay. Number eight, we'll go back to you, Ahlam. Yes. All right. A uh, 76 year old man present to the emergency room with ST elevation myocardial infarction and undergoes emergent cardiac catheterization and stinting by right femoral approach. The okay. following day, he complains of significant bilateral foot pain. A physical examination reveals a palpable medial pulses but patchy bluish discoloration of the tips of the toes on both feet, the most likely explanation. What do you think happened to this patient? He has- Embolization. A, right, what kind of embolization? Is a clot? Um, and, um, no. Am I? No. No, no, we're talking about a clot, I agree. But this, mm. is, a, this is what we call the syndrome. He has a blue- uh, blue, a blue uh, torso. Right, yes. the blue torso. Yes. Okay. So Bluetooth syndrome is a microembolization because he has a good pulses. You see, he has yes. a pedal pulses. So we're not talking about a big emboli, you know? So don't confuse with, the, they tell you ST elevation or MI. They just tell you that he has a cardiac catheterization. After that, he has a Bluetooth syndrome. So he embolized, but most of his clot is atheroemboli or cholesterol embolizations. 
is not a clot because clot usually go to the major arteries. Usually you lose the posterior tibial, anterior tibial. Rarely you see like a microembolization with a clot, you see? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So, so this is muscle bluto syndrome, uh, secondary to that uh, embolizations. I saw one case really very, very bad, not when I was in a state, exactly the same scenario. He has a cardiac cath, and next day his all toes are blue. And very, very painful, by the way, you know, when you get that. And it was cholesterol embolized. The problem, you cannot do much for this one. Happening will not work because it's a crystal uh, cholesterol embolizations. So what, how we treat this one? You know how we treat them? What's the best thing to give them? Give them antiplatelets. You know, okay. this is the best way. Ask me, I'm black. We don't give warfarin because it's not a clot. Antiplatelets. Why is that? They think that just make you know the platelets more viscous, so be easier to go through the small arteries, get more blood flow. Uh, the second thing we try to do that also to do a hyperbolic oxygen. I think some people they may benefit from that. Because you know, hyperbaric oxygen can help with the microcirculations, you know, and decrease the ischemia. Uh, most of them they end with the ischemia, but most of them it will be like a skin level. I really see like the whole toe would be, you know, lost, even though the toe looks bluish. But most of the time, patients end with the like, uh, you know, skin gangrene. Really, they lose all the toes. So when patient comes with low toe syndrome, first give me a lot of pain. It's very painful. Antiplatelets, not anticoagulant. Give antiplatelets. And if you have an HBO, I think Albutem in HBO. This would be very helpful for him. All right? Okay. All right, let's see what the most likely explanation. As we said, cholesterol embolization. Okay. The first one. Let's see if the other one makes sense or not. Uh, thrombosis of the right external iliac artery. No, it's, uh, this is large, this is the small. And then thrombosis. he has a pulses, right? He has a yes. bubble pulses. So this is out of question because a bubble um, pulses. Yes. Diffuse peripheral vasoconstriction, no. No, because you don't see patching. You see, when you have a spasm, the whole toes will be the same, all cold, you know, painful, but you don't see patchy. When you see patchy, it's a blue toe syndrome, you know? Okay. Lift atrial thrombus, no. Okay. Chronic limb threatening ischemia of bilateral lower extremities, no. It's not correct. We have a pulse, okay? So there's a why it can be this one. So it's very straightforward, you know? So this is uh, cholesterol embolizations, all right? All right, thank you. We go back to Amjad. Yes, doctor. Amjad, number nine. Dr. Samer, any yes. role of ilobrost for this case? <coughs> ilobrost. Is bo bost MI uh, from... The problem ilobrost for a spasm, it's not a spasm, it's an embolics, so emboli. You know, so I think antiplatelets will work. Um, I mean, you can try it, but I don't think any study uh, should be. Even HPO is not 100%, you know, uh, indications when you see uh, the indication. Uh, but I saw them, it works. Even I have a patient here came um, a lot like that. They give a botox injection and she has damage to the skin. And we sent her for HPO and she did very well. Uh, so anything at the skin level, when you see like the same, like, like when compromised flow to the flap, the reason why I thought the HBO will work, and compromised blood flow to the skin, then the HBO will work very well. But usually antiplatelets is the main treatment, you know. Uh, warfarin will not work. Elioprost, I think you can try it if patient, inpatient, but I will not admit the patient to William Elioprost. I was usually send him, you know, on antiplatelets. But if it's inpatient, you can try it. But I don't think we have any strong evidence to tell us that this will work. Okay. Any other question? No. All right. Amjad, we go to you now. Okay. Uh, 65 years old man presented with discoloration and pain in multiple toes of both foot. Um, two weeks period to presentation. He had undergo diagnostic coronary angiography by a right femoral artery approach. He has a bulbable bilateral femoral, bubletial, posterior tibial, and recess bedis pulses. Uh, his past medical history include um, 40 back per year, smoking history until four year barrier, uh, hypercholesteremia, and uh, hypertension. CT angiogram demonstrated diffuse 
atherosclerosis of uh, thoracic and abdominal aorta. Initial medical therapy should include. So this is talking about the Bluetooth syndrome again. So management. Just, yeah. So the same yeah. question. Said antiblatelet. Yes. Let's so see. let's see what options they give us here. Okay. Uh, uh, single agent antiblatelet therapy, dual okay. antiblatelet therapy, anticoagulant okay. with warfarin, anticoagulant with rivaroxaban. Uh, single agent antiplatelet therapy with anticoagulant with warfarin. Uh, um, between A and B. So right. I think between I'll go with B. B. I'll go uh, with the dual yani, yeah, regarding his another risk factor. Right. I mean, you can do that uh, mm -hmm. because, again, I mean, uh, this muscle with I'll do. But the problem is that when you go to that data and the trial, not the trial, it's the papers, mm -hmm. they look at, look at the Bluetooth syndrome. Uh, for some reasons, they use a single agent antiplatelets, you know. Single agent. Uh, anticoagulant mm -hmm. for sure, no. Platelet anticoagulant will not help. So we are between A and B. Uh, but I'm saying, if you want to go with a the paper, they said single agent. But from practical point, I may give two, you know. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but I don't know this will add any benefit. You see, it's a problem. Not everything in medicine makes sense works, you know. That is why we have our trial and study and everything. So, so I think the answer will be, yeah, the single, okay. you know. Mm -hmm. Under control, response based that in uh, antiplatelet therapy, avoid further instrumentation if possible. They didn't mention what's their reference. Uh, but most of it, they look at some references here and most of it, they give a single. Mm -hmm. But the most important to know is antiplatelets, you know, yeah. All right, let's, the last question will be for my, uh, Aysa. Yes, Dr. Sam. You're still yeah. there? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, number 10. Uh, number 10, this is a 67 year old uh, woman with a chronic obstructive coronary disease, uh, history of tobacco abuse, factor five, flight and present with painful discoloration of hair lip, uh, grade two. Uh, her foot was warm and well perfused with palpable pedal pulses. She was initially placed on dabigatran and but uh, presented to the emergency room again with pain and discoloration of hair uh, right fourth toe. The CT scan is seen in the figures and the most appropriate next step in the management is. So, okay, before so, we look at that, uh, she is 67. Mm -hmm. And she has factor V. What does that mean? She has hypercoagulable, right? Yeah, factor five. Factor five. Yeah. So she has she's hypercoagulable. Mm -hmm. She's a smoker. She has coronary CO, coronary disease. So she has a good pulses, but she came also with a Bluto syndrome. Again, the problem is that you put her on dabicretan. But even though she's still getting on the other side. So you try that first with the medications, okay? But it's still getting embolized. So that means medication alone will not work. This is the reason why they give you this scenario, you know? If they didn't put her on the big cratan, then my treatment will be give her, but as we talk about antiplatelets, right? Mm -hmm. Or anticoagulant because she is uh, factor five. Uh, but because they already give her the big cratan, and it did not work because she came with the other leg, also not the same legs. On the other one. Have an active so that means we have to do more aggressive. Just tell you how you look at the, the question, the exam, and how you analyze this, okay? Because mm -hmm. I want you to be more aggressive, okay? All right, what you look at here, we look at the aorta. What do you see in the aorta? Uh, there is a mural from by projection yeah, from the aorta. Here. You see it here? Mm -hmm. And there's some calcification here. So you have an, so this is the source key sending emboli to the lower extremities, all right? Okay. Because it's different from, there's no procedure to say like a cholesterol embolization, you know? This is just, she has this hypercarbon, you know? So now you have a clot in the aorta, which is felt, you know, anticoagulations. So what next do you think to do? Uh, I think you better control it with the stent, yeah. I think. With the stent. With the stent, yeah. yeah. Open thrombectomy will not work because not like a clot, you know? Mm -hmm. And usually the aorta is too big. Even if you get forget number six, will not will believe, will not bring this black clot down, you know? Because this is a big aorta. It's different from the iliac or SMA or something like that, you see? 
So even you think maybe in Belakim will work or not work in that water, you know, unless you have a water occlusion or huge clot, but something like that will not work. So you have to, the best way, the safest way to go and stent it. Okay. The only thing, okay. let me tell you from my experience, when you take this patient to surgery or to stent, when you do an angiogram, no way you can see this clot because in a posterior wall. So we do an angiogram, our water looks normal. Then you're stuck. Where are you going to stand? You know? So you have to be very careful with that. So what I do in this situation, I use an IVAS. This is very helpful in this situation. With your IVAS, you can see where is a clot in the IVAS. Then I, the way I guided my, my uh, stent. But just to go with a regular angiogram, majority of the case, you cannot see the clot. You see on CT, it looks very nice and beautiful here because you're looking on, you know, cut and you hear it's a posterior. But when you do an angiogram, unless if you do like, you know, 3D uh, angiogram, you have like, you know, a table with a 3D angiogram, then it's difficult to see it. So the best way in this situation to use an eye. Okay? okay. All right, let's see what the options they said. So uh, first option is switch uh, anticoagulation to warfarin with a heparin bridge. Uh, the patient is already on the big yeah. run, so it will not help. Yeah. Okay. B, perform an angiogram and initiate lysis of the lesion. It's not a good option. Also. Yeah, you see, see lysis of the lesion will not work when you have a clot on the side because all the lysis will be done. So it will not work. Okay. Okay. C, uh, stent coverage of the aortic lesion with a stent graph. Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, D, direct femoral exposure with thrombectomy. The lesion in the aorta, not in the femoral, so has nothing to do with the femoral. Right. Okay. And the last one, open aortic exposure with enterectomy of the legion. Well, that's a very big surgery yeah. compared to the stent. The stent is better. Right. Unless if you have like a young patient, let me see how old. This is 67. Because one time I had the patient, she's I think 30 or early 30, and she has like similar lesion, big atheroma and aortic bifurcations. And because she's young, I don't want to put her through and just only localized lesion. I don't want to put her through, you know, to stand and everything. She's a young lady. So I didn't open, you know, endotractomy of the distal water. So this is only, if, yes, it's a major surgery, but it's good for young people, you know. But somebody like an old, I think this is the best way to go with a stent coverage. All right? Okay. All right, I think the hour is over. So any questions? So... We'll start 11 next, uh, about guys next week. Uh, we were talking before the other guys to join us. Uh, your exam on December on December 2nd. So next um, Tuesday or Wednesday will be the last one before your exam. Do you want us guys to write your questions and we can go over them if you have any question, concern, because you're reading a lot of materials these days. I'm sure you come up with a lot of questions. Should we do it this way? or just continue reviewing the visa? What do you prefer? Or just give you a break next week? Any suggestion? I think a break, Abbas. Okay, so you can study? All right, guys. Yeah. Well, Doctor, uh, if I can make suggestion and- Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, we can make it on Tuesday and to review like the, the question we, we couldn't have, answer or we have debate well, I'll on. I'll tell you, I mean, Tuesday be good time. So you have time, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it depends how many. Uh, Tuesday morning, I will send you a message on the group and we'll see if you guys have a lot of questions and yes, but maybe you don't have any question. Maybe everything is clear for you guys. Then we don't have to do that. I don't want to waste your time before the exam, okay? So yes. we'll communicate Tuesday morning about on the group, what you like guys to do it or not. If you said yes, or the majority yes said yes, uh, then we'll do it uh, Tuesday. So you have a Wednesday free, so you can read before the exam. All right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's better. This way. All right. Okay, guys. Enjoy the rest of the night. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.